Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanchman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the last lecture, we analyzed the circuit in the Laplace domain using mesh current analysis. In this lecture, we'll do a similar example, but here we'll use node voltage analysis. I'm going to do problem 6-22 from page 246 of this book, Circuit Analysis, A Systems Approach, by my colleagues Russ Mercero and Joel Jackson. So we have a voltage source whose voltage is actually time varying. It's e to the minus t ut volts. And then we have a 6 fifth ohm resistor. And this is not a very realistic resistance value. So you can tell that the designers of the problem are setting this up to try to make the answers come out nicely. So there's a one Henry inductor. And then we also have a capacitor that has a capacitance of 1 6 farad. Again, this is not a very realistic value. 1 Henry is an awful lot of inductance also. But you can definitely tell that the professors who created this problem were intending to make the answers come out nicely. So we're going to measure the voltage across the capacitor like this, with the plus up here and the minus down here. And then we'll measure the current going down this direction as ILT. Oh, and I also need to tell you that the pre-initial condition on the current is 1 amp, and the pre-initial condition on the voltage is 2 volt. So we need to convert this into the Laplace domain. So we're going to replace the voltage source here with its Laplace domain equivalent. Laplace transform of this decaying exponential is 1 over S plus 1. And then we're going to have a resistance here of just 6 over 5. And notice past this point, I'm not really going to be writing down what the units are because the units get a bit weird and confusing. Just make sure you're expressing everything in terms of ohms, farads, and henrys, and we'll be fine. And at this point, we need to decide what models we want to use for the inductor and the capacitor. So I'm actually going to work this two different ways. I'm going to start by using the parallel models. Okay, so the parallel model for the inductor has a current source that's going downwards along with the main current flow. And that current source is like a unit step in the time domain. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this as an inductance of S, L, so S times one. And if this was a more complicated function of X, I couldn't write it like this. I would probably have to go ahead and use a box, but here I'll go ahead and draw it as an inductor. And then it's going to have a current arrow going downward, and that's going to be IL, the pre-initial condition over S. So in this case, that's just one over S. And for the capacitor model, I'll have one over SC, which is going to be six over S. Let's see, and for the current source that I put in parallel with that, the current arrow runs in the opposite direction, and I've got the capacitance times the pre-initial voltage. So the arrow runs this direction, the capacitance is one over six, the initial voltage is two, so this whole thing is equal to one third. All right, so I'm going to measure the voltage here now as capital VCS in the Laplace domain. And I can write down a Kirchhoff current law equation for this node. Okay, so let me imagine that there's a current flowing in here, a current flowing out through the inductor, a current flowing out through the capacitor, current flowing out here, and a current flowing in from this current source on the right. So starting over here, I'll have one over S plus one minus VCS. So that's the voltage dropping across the resistor. So I'll want to divide the whole thing by this resistance. So I wind up with a six in the denominator and a five in the numerator. And what else is flowing in? So I'll have one over three flowing in. And then on the other side here, I'll now have VC over S flowing out plus one over S 
from this current source. And let's see, for the capacitor, I'll have plus VCS. Let's see, and by Ohm's law, I divide by the impedance, so I have S over 6 here. Let me multiply through on both sides by 6S. So on the left here, I'll have 5, multiplying the 5 through, over S plus 1. And then I'll have minus 5 VCS times S. And then let's see, multiplying through by 6S, I'll have 2S. So then I'll have 6 VCS plus 6, multiplying these things by 6S. And then here, when I multiply by 6, that cancels with the 6 in the denominator. So I'll have S squared VCS. Okay, let me move everything with the VC over to one side. So let me say I'll have S squared VCS. Okay, and I move this minus S5 VCS term over to the other side, which gives me a plus 5S VCS. And then I'm left with a plus 6 VCS. So that's all the stuff on the right. And then on the left, I'll have 5S over S plus 1 plus 2S minus 6 from moving over this 6 term. I want to try to redo this problem, but using the series versions of these equivalent circuits instead of the parallel versions. And this is basically a check on myself because I don't actually have a solution manual for this book. So if I get the same answer using both techniques, it's not a guarantee I've done it right, but it's pretty good evidence pointing that direction. But if I got two different answers, I would know at least one of them was wrong. So keep this equation here in mind. We'll call it the smiley face equation. If I get to this point, then I'll assume that I'm doing things right. Okay, so I erased the current sources, and now I need to put in some voltage sources for the series version. So let me redraw the inductor here and squoosh it up. So we'll draw the inductor up here, and then I can put my voltage source here. So this had impedance of S. And then as far as the capacitor goes, let's see, actually, let me erase this. And what I'll do is I'll draw it over here. So I'll draw it as the capacitor, and I have 6 over S for my impedance. And then I'll have my voltage source here. And then the way I'm measuring this voltage is still correct. All right, so I need to figure out what to do with these voltage sources. Okay, for the inductor, the voltage runs opposite of our standard convention and we have L times the initial current. Okay, so the inductance is one, the initial current is one amp, so we just have the number one here, nothing terribly fancy. So that's gonna to correspond to an impulse in the time domain. And let me put the minus here and the plus here. All right, so for the capacitor, I remember it goes the standard direction, and for the capacitor, we have the pre-initial voltage divided by S. So that's 2 divided by S. So what about our Kirchhoff's current law equation? Well, the stuff on the left is still correct. I have 1 over S plus 1 minus VC and then divided by 6 times 5. So that's the same as I had before. I don't have this plus 1 third anymore. But on the right... Let's see, I'll now write VCS for the voltage up here, but now I need to subtract the voltage here, which is just one volt, but look closely, there's the minus sign here, so I'll actually write plus one. All right, so then I have that whole thing divided by the impedance, which is S, and then for my next term over here, I'll have VCS, minus the voltage here, 2 over S, because I have a plus up here. And this whole thing is divided by the impedance, which is 6 over S. So I'll wind up with a 6 down here, and I wind up with an S up here. Okay, first, let me multiply by 6 on both sides. So I can get rid of the divide by 6 on the left here. 
I get rid of the divide by six on the right here. Then I'll have a six here and then a six here. Next thing I want to do is multiply everything by S. So let's see, if I multiply everything by S, I wind up getting rid of the divide by S here. And actually, let me move this equal sign over a little bit so it looks better. And then I also want to move this plus sign up a bit so it looks better. All right, so multiplying everything through by S, this divide by S could go away. So I could have an S sitting in front here. Then I could have an S sitting here and an S sitting here. Okay, let me put everything with VC on one side. So I'll have S squared VCS from this term here. And then I'll have a plus 5S VCS from moving this term here over to the other side. And then I'll have plus 6 VCS. And then on the left, I'll have 5S over S plus 1. Let's see, and then I'll have plus 2s for moving this term over. Then I have a 6 here I have to move over, which gives me minus 6. And this is the same as that smiley face equation I had earlier. So both of these techniques gave me the same formula. Now we need to actually do something with this. So I'll factor out VCS on the right, and I've got s squared plus 5s plus 6. And then I'll need to multiply everything through by s plus 1. So I have s plus 1, and then I'll write 5s, and then I have 2s minus 6 times s plus 1. This gives me something like 2s squared, and then I've got minus 6 plus 2s, which would be minus 4s, but then I'm adding 5s, so that gives me plus s, and then I have a minus 6. Okay. So VCS is going to be equal to 2S squared plus S minus 6 all over. Let's see. Oh, this should factor as S plus 3 times S plus 2. 3 times 2 gives me 6. 3 plus 2 gives me the 5. Then I have my S plus 1. And now you see why the professors set up the numbers the way they did. So this works out to be something nice. Yeah, and I guess to finish it out, I should do the partial fraction expansion. I really don't want to, but we're dedicated, aren't we? All right, so let me write this as A over S plus 3 plus B over S plus 2 plus C over S plus 1. Okay, so using the residue method, A should be equal to this whole mess here to a squared plus s minus 6 all over. By the cover-up method, I'll cover up s plus 3, so I've got s plus 2 times s plus 1, and this is all evaluated at s equals minus 3. And then I have the same sort of structures for b and c, except for b will be covering up the s plus 2 term, and for c will be covering up the s plus 1 term. And let's see, b will be evaluated at s equals minus 2, and c will be evaluated at s equal minus 1. For a, when I plug in minus 3 here, let's see, 2 times 9 will give me 18, and then I have minus 3 minus 6. So my numerator is going to turn into 18 minus 9, which is 9. And let's see, minus 3 plus 2, that gives me a 1. Actually, it's a minus 1, and I'll multiply that by minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. So let's see, that's 9 over 2. All right, so what about b? Okay, so for b, I'm plugging in 2 here. Minus 2 squared is going to be 4 times 2 gives me 8. Then I'll have minus 2 minus 6. Let's see, so the numerator here is going to be 8 minus 8. Does that give me zero? Is that right? Huh. Let's see. So the denominator, if I did want to plug it in, that would be one times minus one. Yeah, I think this gives me zero. That feels weird to me. We'll want to think about that. So for 
C here, if I plug in minus 1, let's see, that gives me minus 1 squared is 1, so that gives me 2 minus 1 minus 6. So the numerator is going to be minus 7 plus 2, which is minus 5. I will have 2, because 3 minus 1 is 2, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'll have minus 5 halves for C. Huh, the fact that there's a 0 here bothers me. Let's see, does this thing factor? Does the s plus 2 term actually cancel? Let me think about that. Oh, it turns out it does. Check this out. All right, so this stuff up here, so this is an aside. I could write this as 2s squared plus s over 2 minus 3. And this factors as s plus 2 times s minus 3 halves. So when I multiply these two together, that gives me the minus 3. And 2 minus 3 halves, that's 2 minus 1.5. That gives me this half here in the middle. Right, so the s plus 2 term actually cancels out. I'm curious how they managed to reverse engineer that so nicely. Okay, so we know that a here is really 9 halves. And let's see, c is actually minus... 5 halves. And this b term here, it doesn't exist at all. Huh. All right, so we finally get that vct in the time domain is going to be equal 9 halves e to the minus 3t. And then I'll have minus 5 halves e to the minus t. And this whole thing is really only valid for t bigger than or equal to 0. Usually we put a ut here to remind ourselves of that. But remember, we're not saying that vct was 0 for t less than 0. We're remaining agnostic about what the function was before t equals 0. OK, as a sanity check, let's see what happens if you plug in t equals 0 here. So the exponents go away. I've got 9 over 2 minus 5 over 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. And that matches our original initial condition. So that works out. OK, as one final sanity check, let me recompute these PFE coefficients, knowing that we don't actually have an s minus 2 term. All right, so let's see. If we didn't have s plus 2 multiplying through here, I would have 2s minus 3. And then I would have s plus 1 here evaluated at s equals minus 3. And down here, I would have 2s minus 3 all over s plus 3 evaluated at s equals minus 1. All right, so this will give me minus 6, which will give me minus 9. And then I would have over minus 2. OK, so that's 9 halves. OK, and then down here, let's see, minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. 3 minus 1 is 2. All right, so everything works out there. If you notice any mistakes that I made in any of these derivations, please leave a comment below.